I am reminded of an old commercial that exists on a lot of DVDs of mine. In case you've never seen it, let me just play a quick bit of it for you. What is anime? Anime is action, sci-fi, comedy, martial arts. Anime is straight from Japan, totally unexpected, not kid stuff. Now granted, that commercial was meant to sell people on watching the Anime Network, and I'm not sure how well that worked out. But the commercial itself has always stuck with me, even becoming an in-joke with some of my friends as we ask the great old question, what is anime? Today, we are looking at a possible answer to that question. Because what better way to show what an anime is than to show an anime about making anime? Yo dog, I heard you like anime, so we have an anime about making anime with voice actors who play voice actors who play characters in the anime. Ladies, gentlemen, and others, my name is Arcada, and welcome to Glass Reflection. Today, a 2014 anime about the industry of anime through rose-tinted glasses, PA Works, Shirobako. Let's jam. On the surface, Shirobako is a look at the industry. It follows the perspective of Miyamori, a former high school animation club alumni and newbie production assistant for Studio Musashino. Through her eyes over the course of many episodes, we get to see the various trials and tribulations that one in her position has to deal with on a daily basis, while the studio rushes forward with the creation of a 12-episode anime. Like, on the one hand, it sounds kinda boring. Let's go to this artist's house and pick up frames. Let's work on this spreadsheet to make sure everything is organized. Let's watch my coworker be a dumbass and give me twice as much work to recover from his massive fuck up that he did absolutely nothing to avoid. This show is like a summary of group projects incarnate, but beyond that, it's also a very interesting perspective that we haven't been able to see much of before. If you've ever worked in the industry of making anime, there are many things, many cogs in the machine, as it were, that you never see because they are under the hood. Sure, you know that there is a director organizing everything, a bunch of animators animating everything, along with voice actors who, well, voice act. But then there are also the production assistants who do the legwork, the production desk who works with the director to organize everything, producers who do the deals with the manga companies and authors for permission to work on things, the animators are divided up into different sections with key animators, lead character designers, and then there are the sound designers and foley artists, and a lot more. I think the thing about the show that really sold everything to me is that it's an ensemble show, but it really just nails that. There are a multitude of characters who all cover various roles in production, and I can't say that any of them feel one-dimensional. They all feel like real people, which is not surprising considering most of them are, or are at least based on real people. Looking beyond the surface, Shiro Bako is almost like a semi-autobiography by the creators based on their past experiences in the industry. For example, in the first half of the series, the studio faces general production problems and massive delays on their anime project Exodus, similar to the production of the anime Girls and Panzer, a show by the same director. In the second half, while working on the series Aerial Girl Squad, the studio faces problems not from production this time, though let's be honest, that still occasionally happens, but rather from a lack of communication and approval from the series' mangaka. This, in turn, is an adaptation of the production for the anime Polar Bear Cafe, where the manga publisher approved the making of the anime without consultation or input from the mangaka. You can guess how well that went. While you would need someone to confirm that the various personalities that inhabit Musashino are, in fact, based on real people, their character designs are definitely something to be taken into consideration. Like, look at this, the similarities are hilarious and sometimes completely intentional. But with all that said, it's not like Shirobako is a documentary made after the fact. There is plenty about the story that's not realistic at all. Group hallucinations about anime characters coming to life for one, but it uses those moments to motivate the audience. If they stuck too close to reality, then there wouldn't be much point in making an anime, would there? Just get a film crew and have them do stuff. Miyamori's story and that of her friends is unrealistic because, well, seriously, what's the likelihood of five friends from a high school animation club being able to work on the same project together in a variety of different roles so soon after graduation? Or how does an artist who has such crippling social anxiety that she can't even speak to anyone get hired in the studio in the first place? Who cares? Let's dance. The show is a look into the industry with rose-tinted glasses, yes, but 
a look is better than no look at all. I feel like some people either forget or just simply don't know that for every anime that you watch, any anime, there is a large group of people behind the production of it. And it's what I find fascinating. There's not much to touch on in the animation department as PA Works does what PA Works does best. The show doesn't have any unique visual style or outstanding backgrounds, but to be honest, I would think that it would be bad if it did, because the show's focus is not on that. It's a bit funnier though when you look at the show and you realize how many diverse characters there are, only for them to then have an episode on the character designer and how stressful it is to make so many different unique character designs. The 3D work is pretty good too, in a sort of Initial D tribute kind of way, only for them to then make an Initial D homage in episode 1, which I found hilarious. The soundtrack is like the animation, in that it too is also not trying to take focus away from anything. One depressing thing for me though is that for a show I like this much, I can't stand behind the opening as it really didn't do anything for me. The music just didn't grab me, at least nowhere near as much as it would have needed to in order for me to not skip it and just plunge right into the far more entertaining episode itself. This show is just an eye-opening look at the big things, while not at all forgetting the little things. So much is put into these episodes that I feel that as I stand here, I still haven't done it justice just because of how much has been left unsaid. Like Miyamori has two dolls that she uses as pseudo shoulder angels to express how she really feels even if she can't act on it. Then there's the story of Shigeru, the 80 year old animator delegated to contract work because Moe designs just aren't really his thing. And the constant industry slang that you almost need a dictionary on hand to understand which doesn't help when they start making offhand references to imaginary anime productions that went so poorly it takes forever for them to explain why. I will admit though that it scratched an itch that's been building up ever since I watched that one episode of Paranoia Agent about making anime, which in many ways is just a truncated version of some of Shirobako's storylines, but with Satoshi Kon's very special kind of flair. Put simply, as a self-professed anime fan, Shirobako is the most entertaining anime that I have seen in quite a long time. And it is the first anime in even longer that I've considered re-watching so soon after finishing it the first time. Like I wanted to just watch one or two episodes to remind myself how much I liked it before writing the script to this review, only to then like re-watch over half the series because I just like it so much. And so with all that in mind, I proudly present Shiro Bako with a recommendation of Certified Frosty, a recommendation for only the best of the best and those too important to ignore. While I know full well it's not for everyone, it's been so long since I've been entertained to this degree that I cannot, in good conscience, present the show with anything less. At the time of this video, Shiro Bako has been licensed by Sentai Filmwork with what I would hope to be a home video release forthcoming, complete with a dub, if I'm lucky. I don't expect my mind to be blown by any dub the show ends up having, but at the very least, I would hope that it helps with all the industry jargon that gets thrown around. For alternate anime recommendations, I point you towards Genshiken, like all of it. It's less about the actual production of anime, but much more about how fans of anime act and react to various things in Japan. It's another must watch, seriously, go check it out. Second recommendation is not actually an anime. It's a documentary called The Kingdom of Dreams and Madness, filmed at Studio Ghibli during the production of the Miyazaki film The Wind Rises. While it doesn't go to the same level of depth into the inner workings of a studio that Shirobako does, it can provide a bit more realism to the discussion, which is something that Shirobako sometimes lacks. But between those two, you should hopefully find something to your liking. And that's it from me. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Follow me on Twitter at me if you feel so inclined. And hey, if you like what I do here and feel like helping out, please consider checking out my Patreon page. And if you feel it within your heart, also consider donating. I would appreciate it. Very special thanks to Dark Crow the First, Jack the Nemco Mimi Taku, Grace Anderson, Walter Kelly, and Nikolai Gray for donating already. You guys are all amazing. Serious. And until next time, ladies, gentlemen, and others, stay frosty. <laughs>